Welcome to today's 3D print. What we have here today is a sick little Ender 2, or Ender 3, I'm sorry. Um, the a friend of mine, a buddy of mine, is broke, so I'm trying to fix it for him. The two of the axes won't move. They will trigger when you hit the hand, end stops. It'll move on to the next axes, but two of them won't move. Z won't move, and X won't move, but Y will. So um, we test the wires, they're good, other things are good, so we've determined it's probably the brain board and part of the LCD is lined up. So we are going to take a look at that today and see if we can fix it. So stay tuned. So the machine was new and um, something went wrong, it died. And Creality sent replacement parts, no problems. First up is the brain board. So we are going to install the brain board first, since I'm pretty sure that is where the problem is coming from. If the LCD persists in being a problem, I also have a replacement LCD. So I'm now going to um, lift up the Z-axis, move the bed out of the way, and I'm going to open up the brain box. And we are going to begin the process of moving the wires from the old brain board to the new brain board, and then power it up after verifying there's no shorts or grounds anywhere that there shouldn't be, and go from there. So stay tuned. So, two screws on the front, and then you slide the bed forward, and you can access a screw on the back here. But you have to slide the bed forward to get to that. Now, when you actually open up the brain box, don't forget you do have a fan connected here. There we go. So, don't forget inside here to unplug that fan so it's not in your way as you work on dissecting your machine. Here is the brain board inside. So this is your end stop switch. Probably easiest to unplug that, get it out of the way. But what we're gonna do is transfer these wires one by one to the new brain board as we unplug everything. This will reduce the chance of you messing up where they go, but they are all marked. If you look carefully, I don't know if you'll see that in the video, but there is writing on the board that tells you what each of these connections is for. For fans, polarity is important. For everything else, heater cartridges, polarity is not important. And for everything else, they are key to plugs, so they can only go in one way. A little pro tip for you. Remove the screws from the old board first, the four screws that hold it down, and there's enough slack that you can pull this entire wiring harness out a bit, giving you much easier access to the entire board. It's a lot easier. And then you can slowly, one by one, migrate the wires over to the new board. These are pretty easy, X, Y, Z, E. Um, so you can just disconnect those because they all have little tags on them. But that makes it really surprisingly easy to do. Just pull that wiring harness through that opening and you, there's enough slack there to give you a pretty decent pull. There we go, it's installed. The trickiest one is the power wire since it has the least amount of give. What I do is I get the power wire in position and I push the board into the power wire while it's out here, of course, you know, while I pulled it out. Then you push that harness back through the opening and lay your board inside, make the rest of your connections, put your four screws back in place, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And that's it. Don't forget to reconnect your fan on the outside of your case and you are good to go. Here is the old board. Something's wrong with it. I'm not sure what. There's nothing obviously burned. Something just stopped working. So we will now power up with this board, see if the printer functions and see if the LCD screen is still being weird. All right, the printer now homes all three axes, no problem. So it was a bad main board. A couple other things I need to fix on this. This belt is too loose and I don't like how much this x-axis wiggles around. So I'm going to try to tighten this up here. Probably going to require me to remove the entire x-axis in order to gain access to these screws since they are behind here. Uh, as anticipated, these screws were not only too tight, but they used the washers. Typical beginner mistake, not tightening things up enough. All these bolts up here were just finger tight. They weren't even tightened down at all. I could spin them out in my hands. Um, so I removed the washers, which allowed me to tighten them down properly, make that nice and level. So now this no longer moves. 
I can move this like that, I can push on it, and it does not budge, which is what you want. Now I'm gonna double check and make sure all these wheels aren't too tight, this one's good. Basically, you should be able to grab the eccentric and you should be able to force it to spin in place. If you can't spin it in place, it's probably too tight. If in doubt, loosen the eccentric until it wobbles, then retighten it until the wobble stops, no more. Before I attempt to adjust these wheels, I'm going to put the top brace back on so that this is the correct distance apart. I am happy to see QC improving. I was able to thread two opposing screws in finger tight all the way with my hands, just turning them in like that without having to move the towers. That's good to see that QC is being maintained. Well, it's done. Replacing the motherboard fixed it. So, got rid of the bad board. Two of the drivers were bad on it, now it works fine. Um, his screen is in better condition than my screen. My screen has a line in it that makes it hard to read the bed temperature, so I'm leaving the other screen on there. It's, the top left-hand quadrant is um, like it's inverted, so it's a different color, but it's still readable, so I'm leaving it. And here are all the prints that I got from the machine after fixing it. And they are about as close to perfect as you're going to get. There is your Marvin. I did the protonome. Nice point on top of there. Benchy. No problems. No stringing. No issues whatsoever. Even the zipper line is nearly invisible. Vase. That's the rose for your girl vase. And it is watertight. Yep. I printed out a little screwdriver. Jammed a little screwdriver in there for him. I love these things. And a complicated print. I switched out to eSun eSilk Green. And I printed out a pair of the Predator pliers Mark II. And these required zero cleanup whatsoever. And it worked right off the bed. Perfectly smooth, no hang up, no stringing, no sticking. I didn't have to do a thing to them. I simply picked them up off the bed, well, after flexing the plate to remove them. I removed them from the bread and they bed and they simply worked right off the bed. So not bad. There's your bedside. These actually look pretty cool. These were printed at 230 Celsius. The silks like to be printed hot, but there you go. Print is all fixed. He'll be here in about an hour, hour and a half to pick it up, and he will be a new happy critter minion in the printing army. So that's it. You guys have a good day. If you have any questions, ask below.